Hello, this is the April 30th Jalen Zones production user call. We have Jan, Nick, and myself, Michael, so far. And everybody, BSD Can is less than a month away. There is still time to register and attend. Air Canada is uh, the, probably the biggest challenge in all of this. They're mighty expensive these days. Unlike the good old days, thank you very much. I hope you're listening. And uh, Nick just pointed out that Mac DevOps YVR, that is Vancouver, Canada, is coming up in June. And that's an interesting smaller conference, actually maybe similar size and a little more focused on Mac DevOps topics. But there are infrastructure talks. Uh, actually, Nick, is there anything else you want to say nice about that event? Um, yeah, I'll, I should be there. Um, it is also a great hallway track to talk to a lot of Apple developers as well. Um, Apple, um, will maybe there, um, Apple might be there. Cool. So you might be able to talk to some of the, the devs there. Um, and it's a great, uh, conference. Uh, I've gone many years enjoyed Twitter. I'm on the um the organization committee. So oh, if that's you cool. have any questions, uh you can let me know. Oh that's very cool. Um uh, same with BSD can in my case. Okay. Yeah. So uh Jan, you teased me the other day with a very cool jail related bit of progress. Are you ready with a demo of that? Let's find out. And I can stop sharing while you rig that bad boy up. And what is the Stormtrooper holding? I've been wondering. A Golden Globe Award. Golden, oh, no kidding. Congratulations for you. you received that. It was, uh, it was part of the animation. Uh, my last job, I worked at like a, where we won the Golden Globe for Missing Link. Oh, nice. And okay. Congratulations. So um, we... Yeah, uh, it's my record. Oh, there's the button. Just have to find it in the... Uh, which terminal did I... Sh no, I don't uh, want to share the complete screen. At the bottom. Yeah, and maybe bump up that font for... Yeah, yeah I wanted to share a different... Uh, you want to share full screen. So, can you see my terminal? Uh, yes, sir. It's a bit small for me, but uh, oh, it's oh, getting good now. smaller. <laughs> it started out perfect. If there is such a definition, perfect. Okay, so um, I've been messing around with what can be more or less reasonably expressed with jail.conf and FreeBSD 14. Now that we get to reuse uh, and share snippets between jails with uh, recursive includes uh, using Globby. And the result is something like this. So let's stop the... For so let's stop the jail. Let's destroy it. Let's destroy the full jail as well. So now the file systems are gone. There's just the jail.conf. Installing with package base. Nice. Most of the time is wasted on the hooks, but you kind of have to index your um, Open SSL uh, root CA list. And now I have my jail up and running. And cool. let's do the same for a full uh, system without any filtering applied. Filtering the package base set, you said? Yes. Oh, cool. Installing all 417 packages now. From your own repo or far, far away? Yes, from my own re repo uh, because there's uh, some issue with some of the mirrors, at least, of the official um, mirrors. Uh, where some fallout with package version 1.21.2. Hmm. Um, but it knows about it, and so I hope it will soon be fixed. But yeah, 
and it's a lot faster and easier to do because um, I don't have to set up networking because I not have as mount the package repository into the uh, jail. Oh, nice. Oh, um, yeah. Yep. So um, my jail.conf looks some, uh, is now broken up. So I have the global etc jail.conf, which uh, is still as simple as when I showed it off a few weeks ago. So it just uh, allows you to set global defaults uh, from user local. Then it looks for anything named uh, something.conf in etc jail.d. Uh, this is intentionally not jail.conf.d because that would then run afoul of the old rc.d script. So it could be a problem with existing configurations. Uh, then next, I have look for anything named jail.conf in a directory in here ending in .d. Uh, and the same for user locally etc jail.d. And I've put all, all in user local etc so that I'm out of the base system. And uh, the helpers here is I implement a bit of helpers uh, to just include basically. With, yes, there's a, this all uh, Unicode bloat. It <laughs> finally comes in uh, useful. Uh, among the 10,000 useless emojis, there are a few useful glues for CLI interfaces. No poo for fail. Uh, sure, we could do that. And uh, same now in the hooks, that's SH. I implemented a little uh, SENA defaults for the shell. And then similar to rc.subra, a bunch of helpers. Among them, one to prefix lines uh, with, my, for example, the error the status messages, and a helper function called run, uh, which runs its remaining arguments. But it uses a bit of um, file uh, redirection sorcery here to. Uh, pipe its standard output through this uh, subshell and its standard error through this subshell. Hmm. So as soon as the task uh, I'm running Good. prints anything to standard error, it's considered a failure and the line is displayed by prefix with an exclamation mark so that you know what is standard out and standard error. And the rest is just uh, basically framed on the left uh, with uh, block drawing characters. And then to run a task uh, is just print the, the decoration around it hmm. and collect the status code. So then for something like the package base, the gel.conf, that's it is now just a bunch of includes. So I can finally clean it all up compared to how a jail.conf used to look. Indeed. And then the defaults are basically there so that you can reference them because uh, jail.conf does not have a way to append to a variable, but keeping it a single variable. You can't say append to the string. You can only turn it into a multi-valued variable and multi-valued variable can't be expanded inside of strings. So to uh, make it possible to reference the default value, I assign it to a dedicated uh, variable. And then in variables, uh, I mostly just forward those values. And but it's possible to then include this file and overwrite the, um, for example, I could overlay write the version here. Uh, but after I've included this file, uh, but I could also still reference the default version stuff if I have the underscore default underscore to either to somehow include it in the new value. So um, the configuration, for example, for the small looks like this. 
So, Mohammed and Dan. Uh, oh, welcome. Jan is giving a quick demo of this nifty uh, mm -hmm. uh, heavy leveraging of the dot yeah. in 14. So, uh, the query is just let's show off the simpler example, just select everything. Especially the tag is used to build the data set and thereby also the jail name. And uh, then the default query is just query for anything uh, which starts with FreeBSD dash in the package name. Meaning and package cool. Yep. And then the small uh, is a bit oh, yep. longer. It's uh, also only considers packages starting with FreeBSD dash, but it throws out anything which ends in lib32, ends in uh, dash debug or dash development. Uh, the jail doesn't need a kernel, nope. doesn't need a bootloader. I remove BSNMP not because it's unusable in a jail, but because it pulls in the big test suite for some reason. It has a dependency on that of that 70 megabytes. Is that a bug in your opinion? Should that be? I don't know. Uh, maybe it out. has some kind of metric which derives something from one of hmm. the test scripts. Could be totally valid. It's yeah. just that okay, I don't uh, use it and I don't want the big dependency in. Uh, then I throw out uh, Clang. I throw out uh, the tools for network card drivers because I don't expect the jail to have direct access to the uh, driver character devices to modify the interface, like load up a different firmware, reconfigure the offloading engines. Yeah. Um, at least not a stripped down jail. Uh, then Dtrace is sadly not usable inside a FreeBSD jail. Or if you make it so that it works, it has full access to the system, so it's not jail aware. Then uh, the debugger is almost as big as Clang itself. Yep. And the linker to generate new libraries is not required in a production jail. The rescue commands are also uh, not required because uh, if you break a jail badly enough that you need the rescue commands, you can just fix it from the host. Yep. And the test suite are also a uh, fair out. So the uh, result is a nice little jail. So I have to replace the dot because that's not allowed. Uh, oh, it already exists. And Which dot is that? The 14.0. Oh, uh, you okay. can't have a yep. dot here yep, uh, in yep. the jail name. Yeah. Um, so, um, so you can see it's a nice little file system now. Nice. 109 megabytes without Occam BSD. Impressive. So, multiply that by the compression ratio, and that's just with LZ4, I think. What did I do? Uh, is there a package for manual pages or is that somehow per? Uh, that's uh, not a dedicated package. Can you exclude them? I don't think so. Not because they're not. Well, wait a second. You could. FreeBSD package has support for basically a li uh, an array of. Uh, Blobs to veto so that those files don't get unpacked during packet installation. Oh, no kidding. So okay. you could do something like that. Just put in the manual directory, user local uh, share man slash star, and it should just rub it all out. But main pages aren't that big. Oh, yeah, but just curious. Um... You, you should be able to do that. So, and you could theoretically, because the base system is fairly slow changing. You could probably also use that to strip down individual files and say that I don't want this directory, I don't want this library or something, hmm. but then why? <laughs> well, so you reinvent all those ancient, uh, yep. oh, gosh, I forgot the name of them. It's been so long, but micro BSD or whoever else. Yeah. Cool. Uh, um. 
So that check, let's check here. Comparison this. Yeah, works the same for the full system. And what may be interesting is, uh, I assume all of you have seen this problem where jail refuses to start because some file system is already mounted, right? Right. So this little script gets executed from this file, which can be included by any jail.conf. And what it does is it finds the jail path as from its first argument, then loops over all mounted file systems. Uh, let it instructs mount to print it in FS tab format. Using that, it strips out uh, only the mount point, and if it's either exactly uh, the jail path or it's the jail path a slash and then something, uh, it keeps the mount point on its list. Oh, so it keeps the whole line, and then it feeds these uh, into uh, U mount. Uh, uh, FS tab handling logic to unmount all the file systems under the jail path. Nice. So that doing that in prepare before jail tries to mount file system cleans that up and again using a bit of uh, could you decorative that into the doc? Uh, I have last week or oh you did okay the week before. So I'm not, I'm not and that's just so that it we get a pretty um, output in formatted by column. So if I stop the jail, for, uh, I, oh, right. Uh, it's also in release so that if the jail stops, the file systems get unmounted again. So jail dash R4, and we get this. Tells us what was unmounted. Starting that up again, so just to make sure that it, and as you can see, it was less than 90 uh, milliseconds to uh, spin that up, despite all the decorative bloat. Well, with or without package installation? There was no package installation this oh. time. Oh, okay. uh, the package installation is not uh, done on every boot, but only when the snapshot is missing. Okay. Uh, so you. it uses a snapshot to track that it has already done that. And it uh, to protect the host system from a malicious jail, uh, it uh, attempts to roll back, but it does not force the rollback to the add empty snapshot so that uh, it fails uh, unless it can, without using force, roll back to an add empty snapshot on all uh, data sets mounted into the jail uh, because the package manager is not secure to use on an untrusted jail because it could, for example, run an arbitrary command uh, from a package uninstall or install hook, which is intentional, but it means that you sh shouldn't use a package dash dash root deer on an untrusted user land. Um, because uh, as defense against that, I create an add empty snapshot and roll back to that before doing the installation and then snapshot the installed system. Nice. Any uh, questions for you? Um... Snapshot is also my marker that I don't have to package install again. And it is a good point to start cloning from uh, so that I can only have only one FreeBSD 14 dot patch level, uh, full jail, and then create uh, read only clones of that to be mounted into other jails so that we have a read only root file system or jail file system. How far is this from being shareable? Not far away. Uh, 
to be really useful, it just needs the handling to uh, handle clones so that you can actually create uh, in a jail specification. So something like uh, I say that because our clone trooper, Nick, said mm -hmm. this it looks awesome on fire. So yeah, let's... So, uh, here, for example, I have basically, uh, the logic to ha install an application is in this, and then basically a snapshot of everything I want it to, of the versions goes in here. And so I have here, uh, just include that, and it would then use we use existing logic for the package installations, which would then give me basically as user local and var db whatever uh, file systems to use as a starting point, and would then get its own var db uh, min io for example for the objects in your object store because min io is an object store daemon and. Um, when I want to upgrade basically a specific jail, I would just destroy the clones and recreate from by cloning from the new version. And the template could be instantiated as often as you need it because it's not running. So these are persistent jails inside the full jail or the small jail. There isn't a single process. It's only there as a jail so that the jail command can track it as a dependency. So that it will, if you, let's say patch level seven comes out, I change my configuration, I change my um, my version here. I would say I need a version uh, patch 14.0 patch level seven. Yep. And then it would say, I depend on that. And if you have also created that, uh, basically taken uh, this here and had a version where it references here P7, that file is also not complex. It's really just defines that. Oh, quick question. If you don't specify the patch level, does it grab the oldest or the newest? If you don't, then uh, you have a missing variable error. Well, if you don't, if you have a release with no patches yet, you set it to the empty string. Okay. So if you have 14.1, you set the, the patch to empty string and then it matches. Could it match that's the, idea the right latest now. if a P7 shows up? Yes, you... you can also uh, do that. But the problem with that is that a uh, latest is a moving target and your snapshot would then be named latest and it would basically ah. be invalid when latest definition okay. changes the snapshot. You would have to manually basically destroy the snapshot and rerun it. So it would basically be, yeah, it's too mute. It's mutable and thereby not good for this kind of immutable management. Um, but it's really not a problem in this case because you can just set it to empty string instead. If you want to do that for uh, just wipe it all and recreate, that's also fine. You can just do it by setting the whole uh, package base version, not without not setting this, but instead setting this uh, ver um, variable to just latest. Because uh, it looks something like this. Um, here you have your ABI. And then you have... Well, wait, so there is a notion of package base, base latest but it won't be. Uh, no, that's all related. in package. Uh, package, package, yes, but what it. about the package base? Not a thing? Um, in package base, it's kind of, so I would have to check the existing uh, mirrors for the official ones. So. No worries. So uh, it's called base latest that it exists. Base latest, oh, no kidding. Cool. Uh, on the official mirrors, yeah, it's the one which gets built. Uh, I think twice a day. Okay. Check the wiki page for oh, the exact stable, build sounds intervals. Mighty. Yeah, sounds mighty. Uh, build uh, schedule uh, aggressive. Is... <laughs> but it's not expensive to do with uh, make meta mode. Okay, true. This is true. Okay, I'll grant you that. I'll grant you that. And um, yes, so 
idea would be that you can then basically collaborate with others and share your how to set up a, a read-only jail, as in the build instructions, similar to a Docker file, uh, just as a jail.conf. So you could have a Git repository of uh, community uh, contributed uh, jail.conf uh, snippets. To do what, for example, um, others have tried before with special purpose tools and failed, like the plugins in Freenas for Plex or MinIO or um, Nextcloud or something. So that's and then uh, if you wanted to be uh -huh. uh, fancy about it, because you can have directories in there, you could also have uh, Git sub uh, repositories if you wanted to go that route. So what's missing to wrap that bad boy around a uh, uh, test deployment? I have it figured out for one application and, and done it for a second application. So I know that the scheme can work. And now I have to factor it out of a single jail.com from hell okay. uh, into yep. Yep. the yep. reusable oh. parts. So you've got the syntax, you just need to break it up. Yes, I have all the commands. I just have to clean it up. So the one helper I did, uh, which I finally accepted that it's useful enough to be worth it. Uh, is that uh, inside here, for example, I have a little make file to auto-generate this file here, uh, which defines all the variables uh, for the shell script to use. So this um, kind of messy uh, one-liner here generates uh, one uh, file which defines a jail.conf variable, which contains the shell code to uh, export all the variables from these files. So it concatenates all the sources here, pipes it through SED to uh, find anything which looks like a jail.conf variable, so basically a line starting with white space, then a dollar, followed by <laughs> um, potentially white space and an uh, e equal sign. Yes, that is not secure to use with um, multi-line strings because it does not understand multi-line strings. Uh, so it's only a helper so that I don't get crazy uh, manually tracking that but you could write a better script which understands the syntax correctly and handles multi-line strings. It's just that a SED one-liner was quick and dirty and useful because it works for the configurations I've written. Dan, Mohamed, Michael, uh, questions? Mm. No, sir, not from my side. But looks nifty indeed. Is that is that in relation related to your work of including the conf that you have multiple confs that you can include? That's uh, basically the extreme uh, implication of that. If you take that to its logical conclusion, you end up with mm. stuff like this in the uh, formatted output is just because I have a 4K display and mm -hmm. I can put lots of dense text on it, but then you get lost in the output. Mm -hmm. So uh, instead I just said, okay, let's uh, print a little bit of decoration so that it groups the different uh, steps so that I know which one I'm in if it fails. And then using a Unicode uh, drawing elements instead of just uh, ASCII art, is no harder to do on a modern system than doing the traditional ASCII art, but the result looks, I think, a lot nicer, and it's no difference to the logic. The Unicode font rendering is already implemented in the terminal, so why not make use of it? Cool. 
So yeah, what beverages can we send your way to get that wrapped up? Untangle the beehive code, add the cloning if for those who celebrate. Mm. I love it. It is so ridiculously elegant and the resulting jails are so ridiculously small and manageable, which is usually tricky to pull well, off. Um, hmm. I can uh, revisit the idea from uh, what I've done as the in the most extreme case uh, before is that uh, you've probably experienced that, that you have that you collect lots and lots and lots of jails because it's so cheap to spin up, but the problem is then you have the next, even if it's just a mana release, and with, uh, if you didn't think ahead far enough, now you basically sit there and manually run uh, whatever method you want to do, FreeBSD update and then ETC update for each uh, jail. It's mind numbing, it's error prone, and just uh, annoying. Amen. To go through that. And one thing I've prototyped, which worked quite well, is to consider slash etc and user local etc uh, as in feral so that in the jail pre start hook, um, what happens is the jail gets started, it mounts a temp fs as slash etc, so it's lost when the jail is stopped. Yeah. When the file system is unmounted. But the slash etc and slash user local etc file systems are pre-populated uh, with the mount uh, MFS command. Oh gosh, yes, you showed us that. And oh, wow. <laughs> then the jail has in its configuration directory on the host just the little config file or the changes to the ones you care. So it basically runs sysrc uh, inside the jail uh, or it runs some other uh, quick little command with no network stuff, as, or it runs PW to create a user or something. Mm -hmm. And it does it on every jail start. So that what's really persisted is basically your patch against the template. Nice. And the patch is applied on every start and is a lot more stable than the resulting file system. Hmm. Wow. So that you only have to know that you want to run service enable engine X on that jail and then spin it up. Hmm. And then you don't have to do anything. Uh, and you still at runtime, if you want to mess with it, uh, you have a mutable slash ETC or user local ETC. So it's not that you can't modify it at all. But you also get a reproducible clean environment because on every start, the jail destroys its uh, slash etc by unmounting any leftover mount points and then recreates it so that okay. just a service jail restart name of my jail gives you the clean uh, file systems again with the modifications applied. And it takes tens of milliseconds to do that. Hmm. Not unless you do something very slow uh, in there. Do but can... slash etc. If you check, it, let's have a look here. Sharing again. I think you stopped the share. Oh, sorry, uh, stopped sharing that. Uh, let me just check how big slash etc is on a fresh installation. Uh, Two point one megabytes. Hmm. For 500, let's say let's say 580 files, so it's just so little that it doesn't hurt to copy that into a tempfs. Sure, sure. From sure. a memory point of view, we're running out on zfs, so two megabytes are <laughs> a running error. Yep, and probably compressible. So are these pets or cattle? Definitely cattle. Okay. Any questions for Jan? At least if you give them inferior slash etc directories, because it would be uh, like bringing your dog to the pound every night. 
Goodness. Oi. Well, thank you, Jan. That is awesome. And uh, I can't wait to try that. I actually have some a VM hurting for that, but the host is on 13 and others that just have to happen. So make it so, please, please, please. I you love may it. be able to just apply the um, patch to add not include support. Oh, interesting. Oh, you are, you are. So or you just are. compile okay. the. Um, yep. Ah. 14 gel command uh, on a 13 system. Just copy the command directory out and compile it and see if it runs. Yeah, no kidding. Because, no, I'm uh, not too worried. There shouldn't be any big ah. uh, API breakages. So there's a good chance that you can just take the sources out of a FreeBSD 14 uh, user land and just run on a 13 system, copy out the uh, application directory uh usr dot uh, spin jail and see if it compiles yes but your syntax for package base is basically a sniff away from being a boot environment creation tool <laughs> just add a kernel and a few tweaks and hallelujah so that's quite cool ah seriously any questions for Jan? i've had a million of them and I can't wait to see this. Mr. Langell, do you have any questions or news? When is my pizza going to be delivered? Goodness, there's an app for that. And Check your uh, notification emails for the link to stock the poor delivery guy. So that said, BSD can is less than a month away, and Nick pointed out Mac DevOps YVR, which he's attended several times and is part of the planning committee for. So thank you, Nick, for your description earlier. Hopefully folks will find that interesting. Other topics, or shall we call it good? Mohammed, any exciting news, even if it's not jail related? And can you make it to BSD can? Hint, hint, bag, bag. No, for, oh. for sure not. I wanted to, but uh, there are some things that work related that requires my personal presence. So. Ah, bummer. Yeah, but well, it's good to be one. Better coming gear as well. Yes. Cool. Nice. And it looks like a new month is upon us. Goodness, how'd that happen? Well, gang, Jan, thank you. That is fantastic. I can't wait to try it. You've, you've distilled it down to something ridiculously simple. I love that. Uh, kudos. Fantastic. Whatever you prefer here. Um, well, I'm looking up what time it is UTC, and I hear it is 17.54. And if you don't speak now... Forever hold your peace and like and subscribe. Anything else? Well, thank you, everyone. Hopefully some of you can join the ZFS call tomorrow. And I wish you a great week. <laughs>